Hello everyone and welcome to the CIA's Black Moon Lilith in Taurus. Um, chat, chit chat pretty much, um, our weekly free webinars, well free presentation symposium, um, this time with the wonderful Vanessa Guazelli Payne from Brazil, Agent 55. Welcome Agent 55. Thank you, Agent 12. Thank you. So lovely to be here with you again. It's been a while, no? So excellent to be with you again. It has been a while. Um, the last time I think we heard about your wonderful, um, let's say, ideas and research with Black Moon Lilith was when she was in Aquarius. So that was, that was, um, I was thinking back at that time and we actually had a Mars retrograde at that time too. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, Mars was in Aquarius, uh, Black Moon Lilith was in Aquarius. She's kind of hanging out with Mars over the past few years, yes? <laughs> you probably got, yes, yes. probably got a bit to say about that. But before we start, um, let me tell you about Agent 55. She is um, a pretty, uh, let's say, well-known functioning astrologer in Brazil and South America because you've been the president of, you know, a big organisation for a while. Um Therefore, very connected, let's say, down there with, with um, what's going on with astrology in South America. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, you know, how, how's it going down there? <laughs> because you all speak a different language, we're kind of in a bit of a di different world. Yeah, well, it's, it's been quite something as everywhere around the world, of course. Um, every place has its own challenges, no? But um, so... Brazil specifically, the country I am in right now and where I was born, uh, is going through this very strong, it's, it's a karmic period really, that yes. uh, it also has to do, I have a specific research on that, uh, regarding the, the interactions of Black Moon Lilith and the nodes, and they are happening right on every um, um, solar return of Brazil wow. since um, years and it's still going to go on throughout this decade for quite a while until 2028 more specifically in a very very uh, tight uh, orb so this so is like super super karmic cleansing you know and it's like it's really not going to be the same the country we just yeah. hope nature somehow survives you know because it's been tough as in many places, as is the our our global situation, really. Yeah, we'll talk about this a, a little bit more when we we recap the year, let's say. But just thinking about fires, you're mentioning fires in Brazil. The year started with fires in Australia. You know, Cal the the um, the California fires, American Colorado fires. Um, Black Moon has been in Aries all year, hasn't she? Yeah. You know. Yeah about to change um, <clears throat> into Taurus and we'll talk about the difference between the true node and the mean node for those of you that don't know um, but we're just kind of introducing what we are going to talk about today because it's such a juicy subject I love Black Moon Earth and I love what you've actually taught us about her Vanessa because um, quite often the kind of the, the stories and the themes of Black Moon Lilith that sort of generate through the astrology world are really quite negative about a revengeful female kind of archetype. But you've taught me, because you've done lectures for the CIA and in Australia, um, that, you know, it's much more about the kind of the source that grows from deep inside of us um that's how i understand it like the gravity of the moon that compels us to 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 act on something so that's what i particularly love about vanessa's teachings with black moon lilith and i don't think too many people actually treat her like that do you know what i mean what what's your you know kind of let's say understanding of black moon lilith in that you know in that broader sense how other astrologers understand her yeah yeah it's been quite an interesting ride so far no and it keeps on going uh because yeah this is a research that i've been doing for a long long time it's been nearly um yeah nearly 20 years that i started to study black moon lilith 
no and uh, i've just gone through this year uh, through my uh third black moon lilith return knowing about her no so uh, it's quite interesting to 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 live it and to observe it and also this rich uh, experience of interacting in so many different continents working with black moon lilith no i've been there in australia it was so special to be there with you guys and work with black moon lilith there and in india in turkey in uh iran that was amazing as well um well um spain and and uh portugal and well so many places around no and, and uh different continents so and really what i do get from people is um is really this uh, from colleagues really also of course from people in general for sure but also for, from colleagues that at first sometimes like they meet me in a conference and they're like oh okay you speak about black moon and it was like yeah well you know um so yeah this girl is gonna talk about black moon lily oh, like they expect something you know like exotic or kind of or, or you know the usual black moon lily you know thing and it's um and then they're quite surprised because it's the not it's something else yeah it's something else like people often related to either to like just the bad stuff that could happen to you or or just uh a sexuality and yep. it's way much more than that it's like yep. it's this point that as you said because it is actually the life force in us it's our, our very basic drives so it, it is what moves us and in sexuality it's also present but it's also present in uh, uh, natural uh, situations and events like uh, tsunamis and uh, earthquakes and you know and so it's it's this powerful force of nature yeah. that um, is that can be challenging but that also ha can be very empowering and very uh, has this beautiful potential for creativity yeah. as well in a very amazing way and it's because it is this very deep visceral level it has the potential to to really actualize the sublime in our lives because it really connects it's not just you know ideas you know it's something that really connects beyond like it, it really integrates different dimensions of life so it's a pretty interesting point it's yeah. the moon's energy right so it's not it's not this other mysterious uh, astro body you know it's actually uh, the energy of the moon it's a relation between the moon and the earth and that's very basic very yeah and the Sorry? pool the pool you know the the tension between between that that those two bodies um and and that it's not like completely or you know like perfect orbit because the moon's got a wobble and the gravity's not in the center of the earth and you know it's it's got this kind of interesting like all moon stuff you know this wave this unpredictable wave in it yeah um although um i i love what you've always said also about black moon lilith being um the visceral kind of um you know we, we can sense things to me it's it's very primal it's actually even more primal than our personal moon right because exactly. it, it, it it's been something that's been happening to the earth forever you know forever and it's part of our almost like our dna in a sense that you know of, of a natural of natural side mm. so it's it's a really rich way to to connect with black moon lilith as opposed to she's just a revengeful female you know i mean you could think about the planet earth as being a revengeful female for what has had you know been happening to her you know um of course and you know then coming into this time for black moon lilith in taurus which is much more embodied isn't it you know than this kind of frenzy that's been aries black moon lilith in aries so how about how about for those that don't know you let us tell us a little bit about the difference between the mean node and the true node um just you know because we have new people all the time <laughs> you know joining us um because the because black moon and lilith um is not a planet she's a the apogee of the moon therefore she's not a physical body moving around um therefore there is with every nodes we either use a true node or a mean node so can you tell us a bit more about that vanessa yeah 
So uh, the me node and the true node, yeah? Also the true can also sometimes be called uh, the oscillating um, node because it oscillates, it, it actually goes like a zigzag. What, uh, was we, we have the, um, the, the me node is, we can think of this movement, yeah? Like the movement that my arm's doing here. Uh, it's the mean, it's the direction, the line that's being actually uh, done. But then there is the texture of it. And the texture is like a zigzag, yeah? So it's like my finger here going zigzag, zigzag. So, but there's the mean, which is actually the one that uh, stays for nine months in a sign. And it's much more stable uh, as a reference because it does not uh, move around all the time as, as, as the true node, uh, because, it, but, but not just, you know, not just as, oh, okay, that's more practical. No, it's not about that. It's really because it's nine months. It's, it relates to the womb experience. Yeah? It's this level, this very deep basic level in us uh, from when our bodies were formed actually in the womb. So it, it has also this very uh, important um, conceptual uh, um, understanding, yeah, that is, is crucial. So this is actually the period that is ruled by that sign. But then we have the zigzag actually marking some details of it, yeah? So it's like this undertone of the already undercurrent, which is Black Moon Lilith, is the collective undercurrent, yeah? This visceral level that is moving people, but it's not something that we have already elaborated. So, you know, it could be, it's not really necessarily elaborated with words and images, you know, and, and um, meanings that are already, you know, well understood, but it's this visceral force, this something moving, us you know in in, our, in the collective as well so there's this undercurrent during nine months and then there's this oscillating bit which will add to it as this yet deeper uh detail to it yeah so for instance we are now uh, during still during um black moon lilith in aries transit yeah until the 21st of october but the true node is still gonna hop into Aries until the 30th of March of 2021, yeah? So we're gonna have this echo. We can think of it as an echo, yeah? So this, but this echo can change a lot. We're gonna, for instance, we're gonna be having the me node in Taurus, but Aries is still gonna be uh, uh, stepped into by, by the true node until March. But it will also step into Gemini already in uh, December now, December 2020. Yeah. So, it's, so this is how much it can oscillate. Okay. So this is, this is, uh, uh, so that's why, you know, it's not something that can really tell you about a period in a very clear way as the mean does. And another thing is also then really from my research, uh, as we see when, when we take natal charts and we see the examples of people's lives, the me node is really the main one. It's also, we, we can also consider it the effect. It's really how it operates as an effect on us and how we also have an effect into the world. But we do have that undertone, that echo or that cause of that effect. There's something, some in extra information we can gather, yeah, by looking into the um, true node, yeah? So uh, for instance, yeah, I was born with Black Moon Lilith in Aries me node, but my true node is in Pisces. So there's something that also, you know, connects to Pisces, but mm -hmm. it, for sure, no doubt it is Aries, yeah? So, yeah. and that I've observed, I mean, really, really, I've just uh, uh, renewed my research actually, because some years ago, I did this extensive research with a, uh, minimum 20 charts per sign. Yeah, it actually was always more than 20, but that was like the, the minimum I had set uh, for, for the research. And then uh, now I'm actually renewing it and re resorting and, and gathering some other uh, people 
as examples because I'm preparing the book, Julia, finally, I'm actually working on, on, on getting it done. You know, it's, it's taking a while, but I'm, I'm working on it. So, uh, and, and, so and, and so it's really, really just to give you guys an idea of how many charts I've looked into and how many uh, biographies, you know, and how many different situations from people I know and from, from clients, from, uh, the, you know, famous people and all sorts of stories from different parts of the world. I also have clients in different parts of the world. So it's like, it's quite a rich experience, you know, observing this, this point, this astral point. See. So that's so that's it. I hope I, I, you guys got it, you know, the, the difference. That's why we are doing now this webinar because we are entering the rulership of Taurus on the 21st. But Aries is still going to be around and Gemini is gradually going to start, you know, but very gradually, just slightly. Yeah? Yeah. But it's Taurus. It's the rule of Taurus for that nine-month year. See how good she is, guys? That's why you have to come to the webinar that's going to come up for our next CIA webinar, which is free for members, but um, it's the next highlight, which is We'll, we'll talk about it a bit more later and I'll show the, the graphic and stuff. But um, just in, yeah, you can see that, you know, Agent 55 is very good at Black <laughs> um, I Yeah, look, I remember, you know, you, you, you were teaching us also that, and I suppose many other astrologers like Kelly Hunter and, you know, there's, there's many others, of course, but Kelly's also an agent. Um, that the, you know there's a window with black moon lilith you know the the, the with, between the true node and the mean node so yeah look at both of them in your chart personally um and so you're saying the true note the mean node is much more about how it's expressed but the, the 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 true node is much more about what you've kind of brought into it is like you know in let me let like mine's in Scorpio and my my mean is in Sagittarius and I relate to both of them really but it is more lived in Sagittarius I think no totally the, the effect on you and how you you your effect into the world is totally Sagittarius there's no doubt but there's a root there's something about some experience that, that can be even you know like cellular memory you know from ancestors even that relates to that Scorpio mark and that, but then comes into an effect, a, a Sagittarius effect. Yeah, so then your, your uh, visceral response is Sagittarius, but there's this root in Scorpio about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, oh, I just have to say, I, I do remember that you taught me as well, that the CIA's Black Moon Lilith is in Leo. Um, yeah. and and Vanessa um, has studied the CIA like I have. <laughs> She's been a great agent down in South America because also um, she also runs with another agent, 75 Gil, uh, Gil Stefani, the CIA yeah. Portuguese part of the website. Now, that is actually still down at the moment, but it's any moment going to be up again. I was hoping it would be up again by now, Vanessa. For those of you that know that we lost all the stuff and then we, found, you know, got it again through through um, losing an, it's a very special agent, um, our webmaster JD. So anyway, it's nearly back up. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry it's not here just yet for people to go to. But anyway, keep an eye out, especially if you are, you know. Um, a Portuguese or Spanish um, native or speaker, you know, please, please visit the website. I'll put links into the, the thread, um, you know, after we finish. But um, so, so with uh, the CIA's Black Moon Lilith in Leo, Vanessa was talking, you know, about how Leo wants to brand itself, like Black Moon Lilith in Leo um, is very particularly fantastic with branding itself and having a great logo. So it just made me go, wow, thank you very much. There's our logo. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and the examples that you've given, it's just like, this is spot on. I have not heard that from anyone else. You know, I mean, about that kind of, you know, creativeness of Black Moon Lilith, which is, which is really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and Black Moon Lily and Leo is so glamorous. I love it. I totally love it. And it's funny because Ian Fleming, you know, 007's creator, has Black Moon Lily in Leo, you no? Know? So it's, 
Yeah, it's interesting. And many other very cool examples we could mention, but we'll focus on, on the other examples we have for today. But um, yeah, just one more, which is uh, Pablo Picasso, no? And then his signature, the thing of the branding oneself, no? It's like the, the signature that it's just, it's even a car has it, you know? It's like not only super well known, but a car even has it, no? It's so it's, yeah. And, and the CIA logo is, is like, yeah, super special also in, in astrology worldwide, you know, it's like we're, Actually, we're right. known with this logo, like when we walk with our t-shirts and events and things like that, it's it very emblematic. Yeah, get yourself a t-shirt still. It's just, we haven't pushed it because postage is so expensive. So we, we tend to just, you know, kind of sell at, um, you know, events and all that kind of stuff. But if you still want one, guys, there they are around, get in touch. Anyway, um, uh, it reminds me, Vanessa, we should get you to do a workshop for the CIA online next year. Like, you know, going through all the signs, you know, like what you did in Melbourne, like it was a day workshop, but we can do it over a weekend. So let's, you know, let's make that a mission. Okay. Because I really yeah. need to be down on, you know, yes, there will be a book maybe in timing with the book or something like that. When do you think the book will be ready? next year that's for sure but uh, i don't i don't want to say a month and maybe you know be, be a bit you know but next year that's for sure because yeah already enough going for okay that. so um so let's just have a bit of a recap of you know what i mentioned before black moon lilith in aries or the true the mean node of black moon it's been here this last nine months since this whole thing began um i'm sure you've got much more to say about that than me so i just think it's quite you know incredible it's it's like the missing well it's not missing we've seen mars retrograde at the moment is hovering around black moon lilith and you know she's very much in there so um yeah how have you been following her this year you know throughout this <laughs> yeah Oh, strongly following her, like intensely, really. Um, uh, well, the, it's a, quite an interesting uh, uh, transit, this one of Black Moon Lilith in Aries at this special year, of course. Everything is unusual in 2020. Everything is special. No, it's like we have more retrogrades, we have more eclipses. Everything is like extra, no, somehow or, or, or peculiar. And uh, so, and this. Uh, Black Moon Lilith in Aries transit, it started in a sharp square between uh, Mars, its ruler, yeah, so also for those who uh, are not acquainted with that information, Black Moon Lilith, because it does not have a, a physical body, it is a point, an astral point, uh, energetic, you, you could say, uh, but it does not have a physical body. What happens is it's dispositor, the, the planet that rules the sign uh, where she's in, uh, that uh, planet we call dispositor. And then this, the dispositor becomes even more important. It always is important, but it becomes even more important to actually channel, to actually uh, give, uh, materialize, you know, the, the issues related to, to the transit. So uh, in that sense, Mars, becomes super important the moment that Black Moon Lilith is in Aries. Then that works both ways because he has an effect on Black Moon Lilith and because also he becomes more visceral because he's the ruler of Black Moon Lilith, you know? So it's like, it's, oh, 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 you know, he comes around and people are like, oh, he's the ruler of Black Moon Lilith at this moment. Uh -huh. So uh, Mars has been having that edge since uh, the 27th of January, okay, of 2020. Uh, and until the 21st of October. So the, 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 the tense aspects we still have going in October, they happen under this effect as well, okay? Connected to Black Moon Lilith in Aries as well. So, uh, and then uh, the ingress, which is super important to understand the period, the ingress happens precisely with Mars square Neptune. And she was just coming from uh, Pisces, ruled by Neptune, into Aries, ruled by Mars. And the moon was then in, uh, in Pisces, about to go also into Aries a couple of days later. So what happened was that it was super, you know, kind of blended. Like a, the, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. Right. a swap and, and, and kind of a blended energy, you know? And, and uh, also because some of the aspects that uh, Mars, Mars was uh, uh, marking an aspect that Jupiter had done to Neptune when she was conjunct Neptune in September, okay, September, October. So, and that's also when the, the true node entered Aries. So uh, that, that's when, you know, the Aries edge started to undertone, started to present itself gradually. Mm -hmm. And that's when we had uh, uh, some uprisings, you know, some some protests were intensified, and and even Joker, the movie that actually worked with that, that ends uh, with with that super yep. strong uprising in the streets, yeah, uh, uh, with with blood, the red, you know, which is very Aries, yeah, and at the same time the craziness, which is Neptunian. So that Black Moon Lilith was conjunct Neptune when uh, the movie came out all over the place, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, uh, so that that was the energy. And then I saw that coming, and I was like, oh my God, there's gonna be such a movement, like because when she goes then into Aries, imagine what's gonna be. But at the same time, Aries became Neptunian, so there was gonna be something of uh, sort of like. Um, anesthesia you know because neptune can also be like uh, an anesthetic yeah so sort of like an anesthesia to all that drive that aries drive so super complex and then yeah with dodgy things you know and kind of things that are not clear because mars is square neptune you know it's like eh, what so viscerally what started to happen uh, by the end of january was like something really funny, weird, awkward, dodgy is happening. What's going on? Mm. And then, yeah, and then what happened was in January, uh, in February, by the end of February, then we had Mars square, uh, a conjunct node, square Chiron and Black Moon Lilith. They were in conjunction. Yeah. And uh, uh, a Mexican colleague of ours, uh, um, Walter Enlicker, he was, uh, uh, he's actually not Mexican. He lives in Mexico, but he's Swiss. And he was asking me beforehand, he was like, Vanessa, what's this? What's this gonna be? Black Moulin is gonna conjunct uh, Chiron, you know, what's gonna be? And I was like, man, what, th that has something to do with trauma usually, you know, has something to do with trauma and with health. But, you know, I, I was, and then when COVID uh, appeared, then I was like, oh my God, that's what, what's, about you know what it is about so yeah. crazy you know and then squaring the nodes and mars and then things started the, the the lockdowns started to happen and then uh yeah and then and then when 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 we had then you know sun in pisces conjunct neptune and then it was the exact of black moon lilith with the nodes squaring then we, yeah then it was declared a pandemic the same day like sharply Mercury retrograde in Pisces, the Mercury retrograde in Pisces. It's almost like there was a world before that and then there was a world after. I think Eric Francis said that. But, you know, but, yeah, with all those things that you mentioned, I just remember it was Jupiter that met the south node for the eclipse in, you know, December. Yeah. And we kind yeah. of moved to um, the, it was a corona eclipse, remember? <laughs> it was a corona yeah, eclipse. I remember. Yeah, I remember annular one which means there's a corona around the around the sun i mean yeah around the sun so um and then mars as you explain all of what mars was doing mars what we call moved into the cauldron between where all the planets were then in between the nodes right and and some of us have been looking at that as a kind of very telltale you know kind of indicator of when things might ease up and the outer planets aren't out of a, an alignment of, you know, pretty much they're in between and very close, like in squares to each other for a while. It only really changes until Jupiter moves past Taurus. So anyway, um, you know, as we look into, you know, ahead into 2021, there's not going to be really big shifts really quickly. <laughs> you know, anyway, that's something for another topic. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah. so yeah, so how interesting, you know, she's right so, there. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and just just to uh, then uh, keep on answering, you know, the the the, the period uh, of these nine months, as you said, no. 
so then we had the thing of yeah lockdown you know and then lockdowns and uh, a restriction in our very uh, possibility of movement yeah and uh, so and the whole thing with the body with being in the body and how to act how to channel our energy and then as uh, mars then and mars was still uh, uh going through pisces as well so the ruler was still numbing black moon lilith yeah and then when mars moved into aries as well that's when okay then you know in many places okay movement started again not 100 we know that the stretch is still super complex, Free. but yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there were you know movements again, yeah. For the second semester, then we have all this the whole semester of Mars and Aries is a thing into itself, no. Yeah. But with the ad addition of actually conjuncting Black Moon Lilith then in August and now in September and now in in October is still she's super present with all the aspects he's doing. And um, uh, so, yeah, this is the, the moment. And then we had the Beirut uh, explosion as well. Yeah. And so that, that situation also super connected that, that I knew August was going to be, you know, more um, warlike. Yeah. Because of that. And also what, what has been intensifying lately has also that uh, edge. Yeah. So, okay, this is, Aries and it's Black Moon Lilith and Mars with Mars retrograde. Uh, but then what happens is that so so this whole thing, yeah. What I was what I've been saying about Black Moon Lilith in Aries is like the the key words, yeah, to have in mind uh, to be present, present in our bodies, present with capacity of response, not just merely reacting to things out of fear, yeah, because that's the, the Aries polarity is that, it's like under attack. So either fearful or then aggressive and violent, yeah? So another thing is to be responsive. And for that, we need to be present, present in our bodies to mm. then be able to respond sharply as Bruce Lee, a wonderful Black Moon Lilith in Aries, yeah? Or um, Maria Zakharova, this amazing woman that's super sharp with answering things, you know, straight and, and uh, telling it like it is, and, and you know. Or uh, Michael Jackson with his moves, you know, like surprising, like super sharp, you know, and, and so present in the instant, yeah? yeah so wow. that kind of sharpness, yeah? And um, just, just to mention, you know, a, a few uh, Black Molilid examples. So this has been the, the call of Black Moon Lilith for us to be, to reinvent being in ourselves, being in our bodies and finding ways to move, to keep moving and to keep this vital force uh, alive in us. Yeah, not to just be reactive because we are, we have this organic level in us. So it's not like we can just, you know, like uh, turn ourselves into robots and, you know, and now say, okay, you don't move or, or you know, you just move to, uh, Walmart or you just you know what I mean it's like no we we have this organic force or this life force in us so what happens is it needs to be channeled and heard and you know properly taken care of given a a, a way to flow it's mm. super basic yeah because we are not machines so mm. uh to be able to channel this to integrate to to have this life force uh uh responsive yeah responsive in us so and then now we move into taurus and that's about then embodying as you said yeah so i've been saying like embodying the impossible because black moon lilith is about this dimension that is so visceral so basic and 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 such a strong potential as well that it's kind of like this <gasps> impossible but not uh important it's very potent yeah full of potential and it's a very powerful force. But the thing is uh, that it's, it's this uh, edgy uh, uh, level that really actually brings us more to the present. Yeah, it's just the actualizing things that really like actualizing the experience. Mm. So uh, now this comes into really a, 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 an inert sign. So this thing of materialized. And that reminds us of this dimension of Black Moon Lilith being uh, nine months 
in, in, uh, um, in a sign. So the, the period of a gestation, yeah, a pregnancy. So gestating, forming a body. And it, it has to do with gravity because it's this um, apogee of the moon, the furthest uh, point she reaches, the furthest uh, away from the earth. So it's precisely where gravity shows its force. And then she comes back closer yeah. to, to Earth and keeps uh, its orbit. So uh, this thing of bringing back to Earth, materializing, forming a body. So this dimension of Black Moon Lilith is now, uh, you know, a, a thing. It's now something for us to to be aware of to, and and that that is going to be very present. And also the the thing that then moving already into Taurus, yeah, if I may. Mm, yeah. uh, yes, it's this stuff. Uh, um, so uh, embodying the impossible, yeah. So what's that about? Well, we have a, we can read it in different ways. One thing is how uh, because well, I'll have to just mention this before I go into the interpretation. Just to mention, just so we can tune in, how important it is. Um, she the main aspect she's going to have the main aspect during this transit in taurus is her conjunction to uranus yes that's going to be exactly one day actually less than 24 hours but the next day from the great mutation oh it happens depending. oh it's, it's oh, right, right there Jules. it's right there oh, it's right okay. conjunct it's right together with the great mutation and with the ruler of the great mutation, Gee. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's super strong. It's um. So we have the great mutation. For those who are not uh, still uh, aware of that, well, we one of the main aspects we astrologers have been waiting for uh, for a while and talking about in this twenty, the super important uh, twenty twenty yeah. is the great mutation conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn at zero degree of Aquarius, and yeah. then. Uh, this marks a, a 200 year period. You can also relate it to even longer periods, but uh, we can just j just consider 200 years, 200 years, around 200 years back uh, in earth science. Yeah. So the conjunction happening in earth science. So very material. How many objects have we materialized throughout this period? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. True and man. then now, now moving into air. Yeah, for another around 200 years. So moving into air and it's about, okay, now it's not exactly, we do have already the ability to create all these objects, but it's actually moving into kind of like transcending that dimension in a way, yeah. Uh, as in, for instance, all this digital mess of our world now, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, yeah, money, so many things, yeah. And this year even more so, yeah. So already we are seeing this and the whole, the advancements in technology, but unfortunately in wisdom, not so much so far. Yeah. So yes, in some places, yes, some people, but we know the world still needs much more wisdom. Yeah. To deal with all this capacity. Yeah. Of this capacity of, uh, of uh, um, advancing in technology, you know, and then being able to operate things and matter in such a way uh, right. that it goes beyond matter because then, you know, the transmissions of images and words become massive and, and super uh, rapid and, and instant and more and more and more. But there's this, that, so in a way, uh, embodying the impossible in that sense. So really, you know, uh, actualizing, materializing uh, uh, this dimension, you know, beyond what, what, we, what we would think of. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, there's this thing of, we do have a body. We are not objects, mm -hmm. yeah? We are a, a life force. Mm -hmm. We are not things, we are a life force. So we are not objects to be objectified and moved around and, you know, just merely, you know, as things. So yeah. uh, this thing of, so Aries came first, you know, for us to, hey, wake up, you know, wake up. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, action time <laughs> in the world. It's action time. 
So, and now it's about, okay, then owning this body and uh, being aware of how energy moves in this body and, 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 and what do we materialize? Yeah. And what is possible to this body? So, um, uh, and that uh, is super important. So we see like, okay, the great mutation is marked on the, it uh, depends on where you are on the planet on the 21st or 22nd of December, 2020. And Black Moon Lilith Uranus are gonna already be in conjunction, but the exact is just the next day, 22nd uh, or 23rd of December, 2020. And then uh, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So to have Black Moon Lilith right there shows that, uh, yeah, this has, a, this is important, you know, and also that this, physical dimension is important that we cannot underestimate you know or or pretend it's not or just overlook uh it's a very important dimension of our existence and what do we allow into our bodies or not yeah, yeah for one thing like a vaccine yes exactly. <laughs> which so many of us do not want to have anything to do with but you know the things that come to mind is like if that's going to prevent us from traveling um you know are we going to do it like all these things to do with how what the that that aquarian world the new rulers of our new world are going to impose onto our bodies i'm thinking that you know like this is now also thinking about nine years ago when black moon lilith was in taurus last time or even let's say in aries last time we had a lot of the arab spring uprisings and stuff right the arab spring yeah. started up and then it moved into like the Occupy movement um you know it and became like the Occupy movement was like you know sitting around the planet we've got the Extinction Rebellion going on now but you know like you can imagine there's more of that like we're not moving we don't like this new rule <laughs> you yeah. know you see that <laughs> yes, you know, one super interesting thing about Black Moon Lilith conjunct Uranus is that it is present in the charts of activists, of very interesting activists. Right, right. Like Julian Assange, yeah, like Julian Assange, he has Black Moon Lilith conjunct Uranus. Ah, oh, in, in, sorry, what sign? In, in, in Libra. Oh, in Libra, okay, right, opposite the, yeah, okay, what's going on, right. Yeah yeah so, so you know his whole uh, uh um um the way he's moved you no know, yeah. the way he's visibly moved uh considering you know the, the the collective situation yeah and the social context so libra and uranus and uh yeah. so but what i mean is so this is an aspect that's very um has that edge you know so we're all gonna be also you know we all affected in different ways but but that edge is there it's gonna be there you know that's an interesting thing because yeah, yeah black moon is like what you said before like uh it's also the earth you know the 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 crazy woman <laughs> yeah that that is the earth the, the crazy female that is the earth also you know like not really making it it's so easy to just manipulate us as, as if human beings were machines you know right. or just or how how the advancements in technology need to also consider that dimension because it's going to be there inevitably that's right and hopefully we've moved into that phase where new technologies will will honor the earth that way because some of them will be great for that like growing food with Absolutely. fantastic things are there sure you know less 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 you know less land for, for for cows or whatever you know and more land for for growing or growing upwards you know all kinds of you know different sort of ways of of production let's say that's going to change and let's say a lot of it will be for the good but yes there's still you know there's still going to we can imagine it's there's still going to be the fight for 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 keeping our oceans clean and you know against polluting you know and third world countries and what they do to that to get the resource you know that that's not going to go away quickly you know is it but but it's going to be a step into that isn't it it's going to it's going to highlight more of what's going to highlight all these issues like the, the the bad and the good stuff you know it's it's really this is what we have to deal with it's like this is 
Right. On the yeah. menu for now, you know, it's like dealing with that is, is, is the current issue. And, uh, and, and, but also that's the thing. So uh, what is it, what do we uh, uh, materialize? Yeah, because especially Black Moon Lilith in Taurus has that edge. Yeah, I've observed that uh, also in previous um, yeah. transit, and it's, uh, it it has that 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 potential to really materialize. So in that sense, what we do, not and, and I'm not saying that just merely, you know, as the uh, 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 naive thing, uh, as in what what we imagine, but really in the sense of the way we direct, you know, our, 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 the, the visions we have, you know, the perspectives we have, Uranian perspectives, yeah, uh, and the collective perspectives, well, the need for a cooperation is like crucial from now on, it's like inevitable, yeah, anyone that tries to not do that is gonna, it's gonna backlash inevitably at some point, yeah, uh, because it's like, it's just, it's, it's, it's what, what we what what the theme is for now it's like it's a basic theme now in many levels you know between nations and between people and uh, and mm -hmm. but, but also then you know the visions we can have the inventiveness of what what it is that we want to materialize and also in our lives so yeah yeah so then then moving into that uh, i think we could look into a, a few examples yeah of people yeah, uh, so that'd be great. Um, I'm just, I just got a bit of a joke that goes with this. Now, the um, Black Moon Lilith in Taurus, the lockdowns that may, we, we're hoping that will be eased up a little bit, like in a week or two, which will be exactly around, you know, the time that, that Black Moon Lilith moves to Taurus is so many people are dying to go for a massage, <laughs> forget their haircut, <laughs> to get their nails done, <laughs> to, you know, go out of the five kilometre zone, go to nature. Like all I really want to do is go away for the weekend to the beach or to the forest or go for a nature walk. And I've just, I've, I know all the streets around here better than I ever did, you know, the localised. So, you know, that's funny because it's also... You know, again, looking at the next nine months, we've got Venus as the dispositor, of course, in Taurus, you know. So exactly. she's up totally. to. And exactly. she's, she's heading to her star point in Aries, which is a very volatile spot. Um, that's for another subject, but that's by next March, right? The end of March next year. And I see that as a point of, of a timing that really has a bit more of a shift to we'll understand more of what we're going ahead to, right? So, so, because yeah. you see, that's when uh, also the, the, the true node of Black Moon Lilith stops moving into Aries. That's the last moment right. it hops into Aries and, and then bus, enough. That's it, right. So, but, so, so, uh, it's, but the Gemini thing is already happening. Yes. Yeah, the Gemini is already going to have started, you know, just slightly, but then, yeah, then it's going to only be Taurus, Gemini for a while and then until right. it starts Cancer as well. But yeah, so it's going to stop the Aries and then it's going to be just between Taurus and Gemini for a while. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so and exactly when Venus is like, OK, now now is yeah, she's she, she will be the, the, the dispositor. So um, and. Uh, and yeah, the thing, what, what you're saying, so all this thing of like, yeah, also how we take care of ourselves, no, this, uh, what, what I had uh, written to you about the, what, what we could talk about and uh, regarding Black Moon Lady in Taurus, this beautifying potential that's there as well, no, so, um, and, yeah. and, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to start with the, the examples. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, briefly mentioning, uh, well, in the webinar, okay, because we see we're just getting to the Taurus examples now, and we've been already here for a while. It's a wonderful moment, but it's not gonna. We're not gonna be able to talk about all, all of them. There yeah. are some super nice ones, uh, but just I'll try and be uh, brief in, in mentioning one that I I, I refer to as showing what the problem is yeah uh which is um descartes uh -huh. okay from the cartesian uh, um dichotomy okay the dualism between mind and body as separate things 
he conceived mind being totally different from from the body and the mind being um indivisible something that cannot be divided you know and which then psychoanalysis sees that we are actually divided yes we, we have different aspects of ourselves you know psychically as well uh, psychologically i mean uh, and um so but that was his conception as if the body sorry and we can be out of our bodies like you know too much mind stuff totally which exactly. is what one crazy <laughs> that's the thing and that's not that that's a whole different thing from being you know like uh, the spirit as being something beyond the body because yeah. when the spirit is present actually we we can be very much into our, our bodies as in uh uh you know responsive because there's someone in you know there's someone uh, at home you know there's someone present there yeah so it's a whole different thing from yeah i you know often often we get this idea that being highly spiritual is that you're out of your body and you're kind of floating around but in fact you're a human you're here in this lifetime so it's having that sort of spiritual sense of you know if you're here wash dishes you know <laughs> this is stuff you do exactly. Exactly, exactly. Spiritual, yeah. Quite, quite natural. So, yes, bringing that back into ourselves. Sorry, I cut you off, but yes. No, but yeah, so exactly, you know, so, so that's the thing. And then with, uh, with Black Moon Lilith in Taurus, that comes uh, into the picture, you know, that, that situation of uh, as if we could just, you know, kind of like um, uh, decouple from, from, from the body. You know, which would be the situation of just accepting, uh, you know, living a really uptight life, not nurturing ourselves emotionally, yeah. physically, you know, with health, with sun, uh, uh, just, you know, not to get a virus. Taking care of oneself and being, you know, aware of things is one thing, but uh, precisely we need to, to actually um, strengthen our immune systems. Yeah, that's really taking care of ourselves. Yeah. So in that sense, you know, like we, we cannot treat ourselves or, or, or accept being treated as mere things, mere objects, yeah? Uh, uh, but in that, I don't mean just, you know, uh, uh, from the controlling situations in the world that which exist, you know, but uh, uh, what I mean is also, you know, kind of like being trapped, you know, in a, a mind trip that, that people can then be trapped and kind of, you know, disconnect from the body. And that would be a really bad thing to do during this time. It's been yeah? it's super important to integrate. Yeah. It's been so like that for so many people. Like, you know, you know, this information floating around, like what's the truth? Like it's such a mind, you know, fuck as we'd say. It's like, you know, what is going on in, you know, settle down, calm down. Um, and yeah, the, the black moon lives in Taurus will really show us you know, also possibly how things will stay, right? Like some things won't go back to what was, you know, last oh, sure. mm. like some, you well, know, like the world is not the same. That's so yeah, we're going to have a world that that will have, you know, these pandemics might be actually more of a thing. I mean, who knows? You know, like you know, maybe not this one, but do you know what I mean? Like we're getting used to that this fuller world of so many more people. And the potential for these kinds of spread is much more possible. So we actually have to use our bodies to strengthen, as you say, immune, you know, immune, immunize ourselves naturally to cope in this world. You know, that's you know, it will be a new, not a new thing, but kind of more normal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's precisely it. It is about how how we actually operate with this yeah. body oh yeah. and, and 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 to to deal with this new world that is starting to be yeah. reconfigured yeah, yeah. We're, we're in the middle of, of uh really a transition of the world system yeah it's something that i'll be talking about in a uh, sinastro which unfortunately this year they they're not gonna be able to do a whole international uh um yeah. uh, menu of uh, uh, uh um astrologers around the world but there's going to be the the brazilian the the portuguese version of sinastro but my uh lecture is gonna be uh, have uh, english subtitles yeah oh. i talked 
to Janaina and, and she, she uh, liked the idea so that um, at least my lecture will, will have English subtitles to be able to share this as well. When, and, when, uh, but yeah, anyway, sorry? When is it? Sinestro, when is it? Uh, when it, it it's, uh, it's going to be November from the 16th uh, to the 22nd of November, yeah? So it's it's a free online, free during that day. Of course, if you don't watch it that day, then uh, you have to to buy, you know. But it's yeah. otherwise you can watch it for free during that week. So yeah, yeah I, I invite you all that want to participate. But yeah, so that uh, we're in the middle of this massive uh, transition, yeah. And and so the thing of really how we deal with ourselves, what do we need, you know, what are the things that we need to nourish ourselves and, and to take care of our, our bodies and, and 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 be comfortable in them as well. And uh, um, so and then okay, then I I, I mentioned uh, Descartes, but then we also have uh, uh, Reich, yeah, William Reich, uh, the um, uh, a psychoanalyst that went into first he went into um, psychoanalysis and then he found the concept of libido very interesting uh, the, the, which is a, a sexual energy or this very life force in us yeah and but then he um, he actually transformed a bit the concept into uh, what he called then the organ yeah and then he relates to, to this, so like the sexual energy that needs to, to find a, a, a creative expression as well in life, yeah? So, right. and the, the interesting thing is because uh, uh, Descartes would talk about uh, the, the body being able to be, uh, the body being divisible into many different parts, you know, and little parts and all this thing of that nowadays we have like with medicine that they're specializing your foot, but then your ankle, they might not know so much about, you know, or your, your knee, no, no, that's something else. So, uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, Raish actually worked with um, precisely the understanding of uh, the, how energy moves and materializes, yeah? So then he would speak about, you know, like the layers of energy that could be uh, repressed and, and, and frozen, and then as energy that would be stuck, but with, with physical effects. Yeah. And how also by liberating energy that is frozen in the body, we liberate also uh, psychologically. We also liberate other dimensions of life. So, you know, the thing of like how being in our bodies uh, yeah. and, and uh, finding our, our ways to, to, to enjoy and be comfortable in our bodies and in a creative flow, uh, all these dimensions that that has so the importance of not locking ourselves down you know in a uh, in a, um, um, constrictive uh, mindset you know and then or, or 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 doing that to our bodies and then uh, uh, to our minds yeah, yeah. or yeah. or vice versa yeah so how how to actually deal with that that connection that that the energy that flows in integration, you know, uh, between mind and body. So that's a, a, a Black Moon Lilith in Taurus issue. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, well, I'd have many very yeah. interesting examples, but I'll, I'll contain myself. <laughs> I'll contain myself and just mention that, uh, the, the, for instance, uh, Vincent Van Gogh has Black Moon Lilith in Taurus, yeah? And Who? Van Gogh. Yeah. Vincent Van Gogh, okay, right, uh-huh, okay. yeah, beautiful. so, yeah, and, and the, the work with textures, yeah, the work with textures, and then it's very interesting, something that I really found out from the research, it would not, not have crossed my mind before, but uh, I actually learned from research that um, uh, Black Moon Little in Taurus, when having other connections to writing can really speak of people that have this ability of beautifying writing yeah that somehow will because it's a visceral drive towards the textures also of the text yeah the form of expression so then we have bob dylan we have um um 
uh, Fernando Pessoa, Portuguese, and we have um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. We have a few interesting writers that have a, a combination sometimes of Gemini and Taurus, yeah, between mean and true Black Moon Lilith. It's very interesting that. Oh. Uh, and uh, but with Taurus, it's very interesting how it can actually, you know, because there's this visceral drive for the texture. Mm. For, for, so, um, and also because of this thing of, uh, if we think, about this, uh, the, the um, uh, libido, yeah, the life force that can be either repressed or liberated, yeah. There's something in Taurus, uh, whilst in, in uh, Scorpio we have just the sexual drive, yeah, in a flow, in a water sign, in a water flow. In Taurus, we have the resistance, we have the earth. So it's like the resistance that also, so it, it, we could say that in Scorpio we have sexuality and in Taurus we have sensuality. Yes. Because of that, oh no, wait, oh no, no, not yet. <laughs> yeah. So the, somehow the work with the forming things, yeah, that it, it is the resistance of the earth that, that can then um, mm -hmm. bring something to form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Senses so work that's what Black Moon Lilith is, is about. I just said senses working overtime. Yes, yes. <laughs> A good way to put it. Yes, we yes. Do. So, gosh, Vanessa, yeah, I know that there's so much more to to um, talk about, but we're going to leave it because you've got a webinar that you're going to do for us. <laughs> And we want, you know, people come and join us for that because it's going to be great um, with Vanessa's examples, as you've seen. Um, let me just share my screen a little bit to tell you exactly the, the dates and stuff of it, um, which is here. It's on the front page of our website and I'll put the link into um, the thread here as well. Uh, so October the 18th, uh, 6 p.m. EDT. So date, oh yeah, daylight's time is still happening. It changes at end of October. This this season of, like we've changed day into daylight time. This like month is kind of crazy and very, very tricky with time zones. But um, so the 18th of October, it's the 19th of October in Australia. But of course, anyone that, that books in for it, you will get the recording as well. So if you can't make it live. Um, so do um, consider kind of finding out more about Black Moon Lilith in Taurus because you're going to learn so much and as you would have done already with Vanessa's fantastic, um, let's say, inroads to it all, hey? Um, so... <laughs> Actually, Julia, yeah. sorry. Oh, just uh, just to mention also that we will look into uh, the transit in the different through the different houses, yeah, so that people can also uh, bring it to their own experience, yeah. Right. So okay. yeah, just, what? just just yeah, yeah, so, in, in, because for each person is going to be in one specific house, so we're going to look into that, like what what's that going to be about, yeah, for for each personal situation. And everyone can probably do a little bit of research and find out when, you know, what what was happening last time Black Moon Lilith was in, you know, in that house for you and what did she transit? And, you know, she's going to be on my uh, Venus, which is pretty cool. So we'll see what's happening. And having said that, this is what I'm, look, you know, with the, th with the things that are coming up in this world, it makes me want to pull all our resources and build an agent house. How's this? Gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely nice. Oh. You know, as more restrictions come down and all that, um, this is like my kind of dream agent, you know, place. Like we, we all gather, we can live together. <laughs> We'd be left alone to do our thing. We, we've dreamt of that a, a, a couple of times already. You know, it's been it's a, a, a long time a dream. Yeah, yeah. But that looks more amazing than the other options I've seen you uh, think of. Yeah, Such that's amazing. Now I've forgotten. She's an Iranian architect, and I will put the um, the name in there as well. Um, anyway, it's just it's 
it's been creative, but really, again, like having this lockdown in Melbourne and all that kind of stuff, um, it just really makes me feel like moving out into the country and with, you know, almost like that Aquarian time coming up, you know, this, this Aquarian era that we're moving into in so many ways um, makes me want to feel much more independent to what is going on, you know, and probably a lot of other people feel like that as well anyway. But um, anyway, <laughs> it leaves us a lot to think about. Um, Vanessa, thank you so much for your, you know, wonderful insights into Black Moon Lilith and what's coming up. Um, and thank you to all, like I've been just kind of looking at my phone down here, I can't do both um, for the people that are live on Facebook. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and do, do connect with the CIA next week for another, I think we're gonna do a surprise talk because um, the person that was going to do the talk um, has, but you know, can't do it anymore. So we'll surprise you with what's coming up next week at this time. Um, but for now, thanks for being with us and thank you so much to Agent 55 and I hope you join the webinar to really learn, you know, learn the best stuff about what Black Moon is really about, okay? So we look forward to that, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you, Agent 12. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you, everyone. See you next time. Thank you.